So I had someone ask, how does traveling work when you go and make a video um, about a company? Do they pay you for the video? Do they pay you for the interview? And the answer to that is no, that is advertising. That is an entirely different industry. But when you're dealing with real reporters and journalism, you're on the editorial side and no money is changing hands between a company that you're making a video on or interviewing or working with. So if that's the case, how is, why are you know, companies spending money to do things? So we'll take a most recent example. Why am I in Arkansas talking to the CEO of Walmart and out of the back of a car in an SUV filming him drive the Batmobile? What is in it for me and what is in it for Walmart? The best way to think about it is a little bit like a chess game, right? There's two groups of people and they're about to engage in a little dance here. So the news organization, whatever news organization you happen to be working for, hopes to gain something out of this interaction. And the company, the company or the individual you're interviewing, also hopes to gain something out of this interaction. And what they're hoping to gain out of the interaction is different. And in that meeting or that interaction, each is looking for the weakness of another. So we're gonna take a media company, right? Let's say uh, The Atlantic. Atlantic Media wants to interview the CEO of Walmart. So first what will happen is Atlantic Media will reach out to Walmart and say like, hey, we wanna interview your CEO. You know, Amazon has just announced one day shipping. Uh, we'd love to talk to, about, talk to the CEO of Walmart, how they're competing against Amazon, how, you know, are they gonna be able to compete against the one day shipping, what do they have in store, how are they expanding in third world markets or emerging markets would be the correct proper term. And Walmart gets this information and then they can do two, two things. They can sit and decide, okay, okay, the Atlantic wants to interview us. What can we get out of this? Or they can say like, no, this is a losing proposition. We're gonna decline an interview. But that's most often not the case. Most of the time, the company will, will weigh doing the outgoing message, which is just saying like, hey, we wanna get in contact with you. We, we wanna interview you. And the company will go like, okay, yeah, because we can leverage this interaction with the Atlantic media for like free publicity, free press. We can get our new message out about whatever product we're launching or a new system we're implementing. We can do some good PR relations and talk about how great our employees are, right? If we're Walmart, um, this is a great opportunity and we don't have to spend, you know, $5 million to put an ad in the Super Bowl. We get to talk to Atlantic Media for free. And Atlantic Media now is thinking, here's what they're thinking when they want to go interview the CEO of Walmart. They're thinking, hmm, I wonder if we can get the CEO of Walmart to say something that's either newsworthy, right? He's going to break some news that nobody other, no other news organization knows. He's going to break it with us so we can use that and sell that news and be the first one with a scoop or he's gonna have a faux pas, which will render it you know, kind of a meme or some sort of social media break on Twitter that we can once again generate cash flow from, or we can make some sort of entertaining or interesting or formative video or a piece of content out of that will engage your audience and build our brand as a kind of reputable news organization, right? So each wants different things. So when, let's say I'm working for Atlantic Media, which I do not work for Atlantic Media, by the way, I go down to, you know, down to Arkansas to interview the CEO of Walmart and now we're there, right? And so the CEO of Walmart's coming with their PR team and perhaps their own video crew team. And I'm coming down with Atlantic Media, you know, with my own video team and my own, you know, producers and camera crew and reporters. And now we're gonna meet and we're gonna interview. And first what's gonna happen is the Walmart PR team is gonna try to first get in front, get in front of the CEO of Walmart and talk to us first. And they're gonna try to do like a little bit of pre-interview, just like journalists like to do a pre-interview sometimes with their subjects so they can better tailor their questions to be more precise. The PR team of the company that's about to be interviewed tries to get in front of the initial interview and like negotiate questions, negotiate things that are off limits, kind of figure out what, you know, what me with the Atlanta media is going to ask so they can prepare answers ahead of time and relay that back to the CEO. You know, they want to know like, okay, if this is a video, what's the shot list? Like where, where are we going? Uh, how's the person going to look? You know, is this on location? Is it various locations? And they want to make it look as best as possible. Like, okay, so if you're interviewing the CEO of Walmart, are you filming at a long Walmart location? What Walmart location are you filming at? If that's the case, like then they're going to make their Walmart look as best as possible, right? So that's what the PR job is. They're going to come in right away, you know, a couple hours beforehand or a day beforehand and get in contact with that, that media outlet, me, the Atlantic Media, and, and try, to, try to make their company look as best as possible. And a lot of times it's a lot of humoring and handshaking going on where, you know, there's negotiations. Yeah, we want to film at the Walmart. Okay, great. What time do you want to film at? We want to film at, you know, eight in the morning. Okay, great. We can do eight in the morning to 10 a.m. because we can push out all the overweight, fat, ugly customers that come to our Walmart in Arkansas. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. 
and uh, you know we can make it look spotless and clean and we, we, we can get all our employees looking all prim and proper and get their their suits their Walmart suits right their little vests that they wear all dry clean and pressed it's a it's a little bit of a dance like that and of course on some level Atlantic media right wants it to look good too because if, if we're gunning for like a high piece of quality content we want the shots to look good so sometimes there's a mutual app but sometimes there's not right if we're going in and we're thinking mm, we think Walmart's not up to code we think you know maybe their employees are you know engaging in wage theft maybe you know all kinds of things maybe we want to mislead the pr team a little bit and and kind of misdirect and be like no we're thinking about this walmart and then last minute try to change it to a different walmart location to try to catch them to mean in the actual natural setting that that walmart is existing in right so what's happening is a a little bit of a chess game each each time the people are maneuvering to try to get what they want out the media is trying to get either a piece of newsworthy or a scoop or content and the ceo and the walmart or the that the company being interviewed is trying to not let any of that happen because they don't want to break news unless they're covering it and breaking it news on their own, you know, Walmart PR website, and they don't want to say anything out of line, and they want to come off looking as great as possible with the greatest products and the greatest software. And it's just this dance of each trying to extract more value from the other to make it worthwhile. And that's what happens in day-to-day journalism whenever there's you hear about, like, oh, you know, my friend's traveling to do this, or this journalist is traveling to do that, you know, or why is... Amazon granting an interview with this company or why is, you know, Huawei granting an interview with some American media organization, whatever it may be, is each is engaging in kind of a chess piece dance of trying to extract value out from the other without ceding too much of a risk on their behalf, right? Because on the same time, the Atlanta media doesn't want to waste all these resources and capital sending a team down there only to have Walmart, you mean in Arkansas, you know, perfectly lined up in bulwarks so that Atlanta media spends all these resources trying to get something, something worthwhile and quality or interesting or novel or scoop. And Walmart just comes off looking perfectly pristine, right? Because ultimately, as much as that may be true, maybe Walmart is perfectly pristine, that doesn't really sell any content or any pages back home, back when they take it back to the media office in New York or LA, they don't really have anything to work with, right? So there you go. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, I can talk about advertising. That's a totally different side uh, another day. But that's editorial. That's how journalism editorial works. That's why journalism and news media organizations spend a lot of money to interview people without any quote-unquote promise of return, uh, at least monetarily. And that's also why Walmart and other companies allow themselves to possibly be interviewed and put themselves at risk at media companies. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, Like, subscribe. Thanks as always, guys. See you tomorrow.